what up nerds welcome back to the channel and uh, if you caught our last video where we made Photoshop processing an absolute breeze then you're gonna love this one because it's gonna be super easy and you're gonna get even better results so what we're doing here is we're starting off in deep sky stacker um, you can stack all your pictures in Cyril and everything but most of us are already familiar with deep sky stacker so in the in the interest of simplicity we're gonna stick with this right now and as you can see I have already stacked my image and if I were to go into the folder right now we would see the autosave file but we're not going to be messing around with autosave files Cyril only deals in fits so what we're gonna do is go down here to save picture to file save as file type we're just gonna go to the fits and I'm going to type in my name here and we're once again using my buddy Josh's data, so we'll title this Josh's M45. And then we go ahead and save that. I'm not going to save it because I've already saved it ahead of time, so that's what we're going to do in uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Save as a fit, and then we are done with that. Nope. Okay, so what we're going to do then, we're going to bring up our Cyril. Now, Cyril's a free program. The link to get Cyril is down in the description below. Um, I like to think of Cyril, after messing around with it, as a PixInsight light, or a diet PixInsight, if you will. Um, the only thing I was ever using PixInsight for was color calibration, background extraction, and maybe the auto stretch, but... Uh, Cyril does all this, and it does it really well, and it uh, does it for free, so we're going to combine Cyril and Photoshop today to get some amazing results, so we saved our file as a fits, so we're going to go ahead and go to open, I believe that's on the desktop, we are looking for YouTube Cyril method folder, and here it is, Josh's M45 fit file, so let us open that. Now, weird thing about Cyril is... It separates everything into red, green, and blue channels, which can be kind of confusing. So we've got a red, green, blue, and here's our RGB channel. Um, all the processing and everything can only be done in the color channels, but it's okay. It affects everything. For some reason, you cannot have it in RGB and do the processing. So let's go to red. Down here where it says linear, that's unstretched data, we're going to go ahead and go to auto stretch. And that's what our red channel looks like. Here's our green channel. Here's our blue channel. And here's our RGB. So, what we're going to want to do first is click back to the red channel. We're going to go ahead and do a background extraction. So you click on that. I like to move this over to there so I can see the full image. Now this stuff will all be set for you. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and click generate. And you're going to see this crazy grid here. Now, what we're doing is extracting the background gradients and everything, so what we want is all these red squares, we want them to only be on the background, we don't want them to be anywhere that you're going to find nebulosity. So what you're going to do is go around your image, and every one of these that we don't want, you're going to right-click with your mouse to, to get rid of it, and I'll just go through and uh, uh, get rid of all this ahead of time here and um, it should just take a couple seconds just want to make sure that anywhere that you think that the Pleiades dust clouds are going to be uh, you're not sampling as a background because we definitely do not want to extract any of that we want to keep it so you can see here I'm going through basically where all the dust in the Pleiades is. I'm right-clicking all of these red squares to get rid of them. And when we're done, it looks like the whole Pleiades is clear. And you'll want to do that with any kind of nebula or anything. Make sure that no nebulosity is selected with dots. And then once we get done with that, go ahead and hit Compute Background. And that'll just take a couple of seconds here. All right, so that's done. Um, we want to uh, go ahead and apply that. And there's our red channel. Green. Blue. And 
RGB. So that's that's already starting to look okay, um, but now we need to do a little little um, color calibration. So click back to the red channel or blue, it doesn't matter. Um, go to the image processing, color calibration, and this is where um, Pixinsight does this too, but, but this is super awesome to have this for free, uh, photometric color calibration. This is where it'll take actual data from from sky surveys, and it will color correct your image to to basically look like it's supposed to. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is up here type in M45, which is the Pleiades. Find. Um, there we go. It's got it right there. Uh, our focal distance is wrong. So what we're going to do? We know that this is actually at 600 millimeters. Um, pixel size is probably about normal so we're going to go ahead and hit OK if we move this over we can see that uh, it is actually plate solving and it has found our object and it's going to go ahead and apply the thing and it looks like it has been applied so I'm going to hit close on that and just check it out you can also tell that it's flipped the image um, because uh, uh, in, in the Newtonian reflector, the image was reversed, so now it's more the way it should be. So let's go ahead and look at our RGB. That's looking a lot better. So basically right now, all these things that we've done are applied, but our data is still linear like this. So now what we want to do, go up to image processing again, histogram transformation, move that out of the way this gear over here with the curve on it that's going to be our auto stretch so let's go ahead and see how that looks now that's looking pretty dang good right there so we're going to go ahead and apply that all right so now that we've applied the histogram stretch to our image and everything's ready to go we're going to go up here to where it says save but we're going to go next to save the down arrow because we're going to save it in a different format so we click that I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going back to the same folder that I got it out of. Go down here at the bottom to support supported image files. We're going to save this as a TIFF because that's what Photoshop works with. TIFF, save. Now we want to go to a 16-bit unsigned integer because that is the Photoshop mode. Uh, Photoshop doesn't work with 32-bit, so we're just going to save ourselves a step and save it as a 16 right now. And save. All right, and so now what we can do is we can go ahead and close Cyril because we're done with it. And then we're going to go to our folder again, and now you can see we got our, our TIFF file, which we will open with Photoshop. And this will just take a second here. So... Now that we're opened up here in Photoshop, what we're going to do, and if you remember from the last video, the first thing I like to do is fit on screen, because that's the way I like it. And of course you notice that it's not really in a, in a desirable orientation, so we'll go up to Image, Rotation, and I would like to rotate that 180 degrees. That looks a lot better to me, and it's looking really good right now. We're just going to make a couple of little tweaks, so the first thing I'm going to do... Let's go over here to curves. I'm just going to give it a slight S curve for some a little more contrast and see if we can bring out just a little bit more of uh, the dust around there. Just up slightly. And don't forget to put your point up here and roll that off so that we don't, don't blow out any whites. Hit OK. We're going to do a quick um, camera raw adjustment just to... Just to do a couple of little tweaks here. So we go up to basic. Check out the exposure just a little bit. Let's see what happens. Just slightly. Give a little more contrast. Looks like we dropped the blacks down just a little bit. We're not doing much here, so I'm just gonna leave everything else alone. I'm gonna go to detail. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of noise reduction little bit of color noise reduction and we're going to hit OK. Now in this image you notice there is a couple of dust motes around here. We're going to fix those real quick. Um, sometimes I use the healing brush 
This time we're going to try a little bit different. We're just going to do the clone stamper. So let's go to the clone stamp. You're going to put your blood, your um, selector right here. Hold down the Alt key. Click. Now let off the Alt key. Move over to where you want to go. And just kind of go over that. We're going to do the same thing for the other side of this. Dust mode. Alt click. Come over here. Just get rid of that. All right, we'll come down here, do the same thing. Alt, click, click and drag. Alt, click, click and drag. And we got one more right up here, so let's do that too. And just a little bit right there. Okay, that looks a lot better. And uh, basically, we're done. So that's how you get um, a color calibrated, nicely stretched image that you really don't have to do much in Photoshop with. Um, just make a couple of slight adjustments to your own personal preference. And Cyril does most of the heavy lifting for you. And uh, that is pretty much my new method for doing everything. So. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any other ideas that you want uh, tutorials done that are super easy to follow along with. Thanks for watching.